my dear dental mates first of all thank you thank you so much for this beautiful abundant family i express my deepest gratitude to all for the love you guys are showering on me now let's get started with the video so in this video we'll be talking about the conservative access opening of mandibular molar in the earlier videos we have already discussed the traditional access cavity preparation let us quickly recall the anatomy of a mandibular molar the crown of mandibular molar can have four or five cusps which could be mesiobuccal mesolingual distobuccal distolingual and sometimes an extra distal cusp present on the buccal side there are four pulp horns which are mesiobuccal mesolingual distobuccal and distolingual root either there could be two or three roots usually two roots are present which is the mesial and the distal root sometimes an extra third root can be seen which is known as radix either endomolaris if it is present on the distolingual side or paramolaris if present on the mesiobuccal side now irrespective of the root at the orifice level on the mesial side or on the distal side we can see two or three orifices so which could be mesiobuccal or distobuccal mesolingual or distolingual and mid mesial or mid distal orifice so see if this is the rhomboidal shape opening of the mandibular molar this is the mesial side there could be a mesiobuccal mesolingual distobuccal and distolingual orifice along with that there can be an extra mid distal orifice mid mesial orifice now there are certain there are two terms that we need to consider while we are talking about the conservative access cavity preparation which is the pericervical dentine and soffit so what is the pericervical dentine pericervical dentine is the dentine which is located 4 mm coronal and 4 or 6 mm apical to the crestal bone why is it important to consider the pericervical dentine because the pericervical dentine plays an important role in transferring the occlusal forces along the root and if we maintain or preserve the pericervical dentine then there is a long term success of endodontically treated teeth so if it if we see or have a look on this radiograph see this is the crestal bone and this is the tooth so 4 mm of dentine which is above the crestal bone and 4 to 6 mm of dentine which is below the crestal bone this is the pericervical dentine and this dentine area is crucial for transferring the occlusal load to the root and dissipating all the occlusal forces right so there are two ways in which we can preserve the pericervical dentine either it can be external or it can be internal Exter externally when we are doing a crown preparation we have to give a conservative crown margin and internally what we can do is while treating a tooth for endodontic treatment we can go for a conservative access cavity preparation all right now what is the difference between a conservative and a traditional access cavity preparation so in a traditional access cavity preparation as shown shown here what we do is we do the complete de roofing of the pulp chamber see we gain a straight line access to the pulp horns right and big for gaining a straight line access what we need to do there is complete de roofing of this area but see this is the dentine right but in a conservative access cavity preparation what we do is we try to preserve this area and try to partially de roof the pulpal roof right now why preserving this area why preserving this area what we are trying to do is we are trying to preserve the soffit what is soffit it is the overhanging part of the pulp chamber roof which is remained after the access opening see this is the traditional access opening just my straight line access liya gaya to the orifices now this is a conservative access opening in which they have not taken a straight line access so they have preserved this overhang area can you appreciate this this is soffit this is the dentine area which is preserving the pericervical dentine ye pulpal roof ka wo dentine area hai jo ki which is preserving the pericervical dentine see something of this kind if this is the pericervical dentine so we have a soffit 
which is an overhang of the pulp chamber roof. Now this soffit is preserving the pericervical dentine, right? In a conservative axis cavity preparation, there are two points that we have to consider. First, we have to preserve the pericervical dentine and second, for preserving the pericervical dentine, what we need to do? We need to preserve the soffit. What, what is soffit? It is the overhanging part of the pulp chamber roof which is remaining after access opening. So this is the case which we'll be discussing today. This is the mesial, this is the distal side, the buccal side and the lingual side. We'll be taking a KDS approach for the access opening of this tooth, right? Now, on the radiographic evaluation, what we can see is a KDS lesion which has involved the pulp. There are certain ragged borders seen on the pulpal floor. This suggests the presence of pulp stones. Along with that, the roots are curved distally. This is the distal side. The roots are curved distally with a slight mesial curvature of the mesial root. Let us start with the axis cavity preparation with this mandibular molar trying to make a conservative cavity, preserving the soffit and locating all the canals. We'll start with a small round burr which has to be run from periphery to the center. First, we will remove all the caries from the periphery and then approach towards the center. Before starting any excess cavity preparation, we'll infiltrate local anesthesia to the patient followed by rubber dam placement and then we'll start with the access cavity preparation. So here, I'm removing all the caries from the periphery and then we'll be proceeding towards the center. In this, we can see the law of color change, enamel, dentine and the pulp chamber with a darker color progressively. So enamel is the lightest in color followed by dentine and the chamber with the darkest in color. Now, once we have removed all the caries from the periphery, we'll be progressing towards the center. Care should be taken that after obtaining the first burr drop, it is preferably advised to switch to the EX24 burr, which is the safe end burr. So we will remove all the undermined dentine and still try to make a conservative cavity preparation, preserving the soffit as much as possible. So here we have prepared the conservative cavity. These are the probable locations of the canals and this is the soffit which is which we have preserved. This is the distolingual canal. This is the distobuccal canal. This is the mesolingual canal. The mesiobuccal canal and the midmesial canal. So here we can see two distal canals and these are the two distal canals, distobuccal and the distolingual canal. And these are the three nasal canals, which is mesolingual, mid-mesial and mesiobuccal canal. Along with that, we have preserved the soffit which is the overhanging part of the pulpal roof present below the pulp horns, right? This has helped us to reinforce the endodontically treated teeth. With this, I conclude this topic. Do let me know in the comment section below if this video has helped you. Also, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the love and abundance. I wish you all happiness and success in life.